Stock down 9.5% yesterday, lighter on its feet this morning. $278 billion of a wipeout. Why? What was the trigger? Or was it just some kind of an August redux? Yeah, look, I think it's just, there's just fears in terms of growth, not just from NVIDIA, but I think across semis. And that's why you just saw a disaster day, you know, for, for just the whole semi food chain. But, but I just look at it, has anything changed? And, and look, that's why we're in Asia in the next few weeks. Nothing's changed from a demand perspective. Demand continues to way outstrip supply. And then you look at earnings. I think it was sort of a muted reaction. But I think we take a step back, and this is a story where the demand continues to ramp up from an AI perspective. Blackwell delays, you know, put to rest. I think th these sell-offs in my opinion, are buying opportunities, not the time to panic. I, I just wonder, Dan, if an antitrust probe, if that escalating from the DOJ, this subpoena, if it hits your registry of concern at all for NVIDIA. Yeah, look, I think you have to put in the context of broader tech. I mean, Apple, of course, Google, you know, have another trial next week. I mean, that is just sort of the tone in the beltway. I mean, we are just going to see some of those drum rolls. Look, we're not too concerned about this for NVIDIA. I think just because when you actually look at what's happened here from an execution, the reason that they've essentially dominated is just because how stellar the execution has been and how they've just been so far ahead. AMD and others will ultimately get into this sort of race. But I just view this as more of a scarier headline than the reality. Also, in the context of what's happened in big tech, NVIDIA is just part of the club that continues to be part of that pressure, Beltway versus big tech. Part of the accusation is that it's harder for suppliers to switch. It penalizes buyers. Um, what is the worst case scenario here? Is it a chip, a mini chip or fissure in the moat, the grand moat around NVIDIA? Look, the moat is what Jensen and, and NVIDIA have created, right? I mean, and that's, that's not going to change. And I can almost take the other side. Okay, DOJ is looking into this. You know, rather look into this, give some sort of all clear so it's not a concern. I mean, look what we, we've dealt with with the likes of Apple, Google, Amazon, some others for, you know, for a number of years. But I don't think it changes that. And I think the reality is they are the only game in town. And nothing's changing that from an innovation perspective. When you talk about a trillion dollars of AI capex over the coming years, where NVIDIA is going to get a significant piece of that. In just this political climate, though, Dan, where you have two candidates and their vice presidents who almost feel like it's a competition of who can have the most populist policies, and then you look at something like Google getting slapped for antitrust violations, too. Is this a political climate that maybe you need to take a second look at some of these big tech names that we thought were safe from antitrust regulation and scrutiny, and maybe this time is different? Yeah, look, I think it is a little different. I mean, look, Apple, we'll see that over you know the next call 12 to 18 months. But I think after that Google win from the DOJ, I think the climate does change a bit. But I think the reality, look, we've talked about it on the show, strong have gotten stronger. I mean, you, you know, you talk with your previous guys about Mag7 and big tech. That's not going to change. In other words, big tech are going to get stronger. And I'd argue with AI revolution, that's actually accelerates. And we'll see next week, you know, when Apple launches iPhone 16. So, so to me, it is changing of the climate. But I think it just speaks to just tech is just going to become a bigger and bigger piece. And big tech. Even through m and I think that's going to be the biggest variable. FTC, con, where that all goes, depending on political climate. You know, I think in the, it, it's all added to, to some of the agita as once, once September hits, going into the elections. I think that's also some of the sell-off that we've seen, just some of the nervousness going into the fall. Well, Dan, you're in Asia at the moment. Part of that, part of that trip will involve, I presume, seeing people that feed into this supply chain. Two things I want to know about is how do they see demand holding up? You've got the iPhone launch coming up. And secondly, how much conversation are they having around the political change here, the risk of new tariffs towards Asia? Yeah, great questions. I mean, look, look one, the reason, you know, there's a second trip to Asia in the last month 
got to see where demand is, right? I mean, you're not going to find it in the spreadsheets or 10th floor of a New York City office building. But from an iPhone perspective, I mean, units, iPhone 16 originally started 80, 84 million. It's above 90 million. And that's bullish in terms of what we believe supply chains indicating in terms of what will be an AI driven super cycle with iPhone 16. And, and I still believe an underestimated demand cycle that's going to play out for Apple. But then, you know, you talk about just broader demand. Demand continues to tick up, not tick down. And I think the tariffs and some of the U.S. trying to call tech war, that is a worry. And I think that's the big, probably biggest question from investors that, that we meet in terms of going to November. You know, what does each candidate mean in terms of, you know, the quote unquote AI trade in terms of Trump or Harris? Are the companies taking actions now, Dan, to try to protect themselves in that case? Or, or are they waiting to see the result of November? I think it's results. And look, the reality is there's a limited amount they can do because of just where just the vast, vast majority is coming out of, you know, China and coming out of Taiwan, coming out of the region. And that's not going to change overnight. But, you know, to, to what I think we saw with the sell-off, it just speaks to some of the broader worries. Nothing's changed fundamentally. Yeah. You know, we continue to think valuation, these tech names, numbers will continue to move higher. But it's some of these white knuckles going into September, going into the election, that I think you're seeing, you know, some of the softness in big tech. But I don't view it as anything more than that. I think a lot of these names continue to move higher into year in 2025. Despite, obviously, I'll call it a white knuck or an agile period. Look, we know you're an evangelist of, of, of NVIDIA, Jensen Huang. We, we understand that, that position. Do I now need to look at my investment in NVIDIA as two portions? One is a long-term investment, and the other portion of my participation in investment is, get, is trade. 10% swings, 5% swings. It, 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 it's split in two now. No doubt. Look, we've said you're going to have to put seatbelt on in tech. I mean, this is not going to be smooth ride. How it's going to be coming on saying turbulence, put on the seatbelts. OK, so the point is we are going to see that. And I think you have to be ready. But also that creates the opportunity as well. Just like we saw on Black Monday in Tokyo and what we saw yesterday and potentially over the coming weeks, that creates the opportunities. But there will be volatility. But I think in the end, they're growth scares. And I think we look at these as more opportunities rather than the structural change, you know, as many of the bears are coming out of hibernation mode.